Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Safwan and today I'll be showing you how to use the Dataverse Risk Builder. I'll be showing you four operations, basically the create, update, retrieve single and retrieve multiple. And I'll also show you how to use the Power Automate tab within the builder. So stay tuned. All right guys, so this is my Dataverse Risk Builder. Um, I'm using the Chrome extension and you can also use the a module found in XM Toolbox. That's what I was using previously, but this Chrome extension just makes life a lot easier. Okay, so let's start creating a contact. Um, I can click on these columns. It will show me a list of all the columns I have available to me in this table. So I'll keep things simple and I'll add, um, let's say first name and I'll add last name and I'll add, let's say an email. And these are all text fields. So I can just do whatever. I'll type in my name, stuff one. Ring new keyboard sorry uh, once i'm happy with what i have i'll move to the portals tab and this is where i can see exactly the code that i need to paste in my javascript file so for example um you know if i'm creating if i want to add name in my first name column last name column email address column this is the way you would add it these are all just simple text field obviously when you're actually running this call um you know you need to get this text from a text editor or maybe an input field. So you need to handle that by yourself. But ultimately at the end, this is what you need to um, create a record with you know, properties called first name, last name, email address, and so on. That's all done. Um, let's move on to a bit more complex things. So let's say you want to add another column and this is the row column, and this is a choice field. It actually pulls in your option set that you have for this choice and then you, you can pick by the title say this is an, a decision maker so if i move to my portals i will see exactly how you need to add in the code to allow a choice field to be created to your record so i'm adding this role and i'm adding the number one which is my decision maker field right so if i were to um change it to let's say an influencer my choice here the number would be three instead of one next what we'll look at is um, lookup fields so let's say i want to associate a link an account to my contact record i'll click account and then you can see that it's asking for a guid you don't need to remember a guid all you can do is click on the search icon and make sure the table you're searching from is account and then you can search for turn you the top five results so i'll just pick adventure works and it adds in the grid by itself that's super handy okay once we've done that let's go to our portal stat and let's see how we need to add in the code to connect an account to my contact basically it's saying add this grid or this record which is of type account to this column which um is named sk account and because it's a lookup field you need to add in this add old data.bind property as well okay so let's take this to the editor so as you can see if i click editor it doesn't really copy the code over i need to click on this move code to editor which would then take me automatically to my editor and also copy the code so once it's done i can go execute code Okay, so once the execution is done, um, it shows you null, but you can go to your Dataverse table and you can see that this one here was created. So that's awesome. Okay, so now let's look at the request type update. So update is very similar to create. Um, only thing you need to do is make sure you have your the GUID of the record you want to update. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll click search and I'll make sure to search the contact table primary column. So primary column is the first name. I'll do a search and I know that this starting with A is the one that I've just added in. So I'll click that and let's say I want to change the last name. So I'll pick last name and I'll just say, I don't know, soft one, the best, right? Check that in there and then I'll go to portals and move to editor and execute and the record was updated i can now go back to the dataverse and i can see that stuff on the best it was actually updated and that's pretty much all about update nothing too special okay so now let's get into retrieve single 
So, so this is a request that you use when you want to get only one object or one record from your table. For example, um, I've selected the contact table here and I'm going to search um, the GUID of the contact record I just created. So this one. Um, and now once the GUID is added, I can go to portals and I can go to move code to editor. And then you'll see that it will fetch my contact record. So how it's how is it getting this? So if we go back to the editor or portals, we can see the code it's actually using. So it's doing a get call. Um, it's using the web api.safe ajax. I've shown you previously how to get this installed in portals. And the key thing here is that it's doing a API call to the contacts table and it's passing in the GUID in the URL. So if we look at our results again, we can see that there are lots of fields and you probably don't want to retrieve all these fields every time. That's where you can use this columns option where you can specify the columns you want. So I probably want the GUID and maybe the full name, okay? And if I go back to portals, move to editor, execute code again, you can see that I only get the columns that I want. Now, if you go to our portals, you'll see that um, in the URL, I'm actually doing a filter. So this is just your basic OData filtering. So you do a select and then you specify the columns that you want. So let's say I want to get the count, right? So I can go count and that's the column. And if I run this now, I'll just get the ID of my account, which is not really helpful. So the next thing I can do once I've selected account is I can go to this many to one relationship. The reason you can go here is because your um, contact has a many to one relation with the accounts table. So click on select and type in account, SK account. So that's what you want. And let's say I want to select the name of the account. I'll just hit okay. And if you click here, it will show you exactly what column you're requesting. If you go to portals, you'll see that the way it's asking for the account name is it's doing this expand filter and then it's saying, okay, go to the SK account table and get the name. So let's see what happens when we run this. So we are getting our account ID, which we specified in the column, but also with that, we're getting this account object. And within this object, it will always pass you the ID um, and the actual column that we wanted, which is the name. So there are limits to how many um, objects you can ask for. This expand, you can expand up to, I think, 15 different types. So I can have like 15 different table names here and expand and get multiple columns within that. However, I won't be able to expand to a table that is not linked to my context. Because I'm searching the context table, uh, whatever I'm expanding needs to be linked to the context table. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show with Retrieve Single. Uh, the cool thing about when you're retrieving something is this Power Automate tab. If you click here, it will actually show you the exact Power Automate query you need to do when retrieving a single record. This is super helpful uh, because you don't need to find all of these queries yourself. It's all done for you in this tool. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the tutorials. Uh, the last thing I want to go over was this retrieve multiple request type. Again, I have selected uh, my table as contact. I have selected one column, uh, which is the first name. And I have also selected expand account name option, just like what we did in our retrieve single. So if we run this, let's see what we get. Um, because it's retrieve multiple, we're getting all of our contacts along with if they're are attached to any account. So you can see that if you have no account linked to the contact, it's going to be null. However, if we scroll down, you'll see that if there is an account linked to the contact, you will get the account object. So when you're retrieving multiple, the other option that you have is this filter by. So you can click on start and you can actually do some filtering. So let's say I want to filter by account. So I want to see only records that has an account linked to it. And let's run this and we'll see that I'm getting two records. And if you look at the editor, we'll see that it's adding 
in the URL, it's doing a get request and it's adding filter along with what we've previously seen, the select and expand. It's adding a filter and it's basically saying if this account cannot be equal to null. Okay, now we can go back and we can add in another column. Let's say I want the first name of the record contains SAF, right? Um, let's go to portals, move to editor and run the code and you'll see that we only get one object which is what we were expecting in the first case. Now another cool thing you can do with this is you can add another filter query. So you can say add group and then I can add let's say columns and this column let's say first name and it needs to be equal to Maria. Let's say I want to create the request where if the first name is equal to contains SAF and it contains account or I want to get um, a record that has first name equals to Maria. Now this here is an AND condition at the moment. So to change this AND, all you need to do is come here and click OR. And now it will give you a result if it matches these conditions or these conditions. Let's go to portals again, execute. And then we can see that we've got two objects returned. So first one, this is the one that matched my first conditions. And this is the one that matched my second conditions. And few other things you can do here is you can do an order by. So you can order by, let's say I want to order by first name and I want to go descending. So I'm expecting my record with my name at the top. And there it is. Maria is at the bottom. And you can also do, so you can also do a count as well. And you can say retrieve count equals yes. And you can run this. And this will show you the number of values it returns. And anytime you're confused with how it's getting these values, always look at the portals or editor and you can actually see exactly the query it's making to get this result, right? So that's pretty much all I want to uh, go over this tutorial. Once you're happy with it, and let's say you want to export to Postman, you can click export as Postman collection, export, and you will have your file right there. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Um, if you liked the tutorial, give the thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button. Thank you. If you have any questions, please reach out in LinkedIn or in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. If you think it was useful, make sure to share so that others can watch this video and learn as well.